And Congressman Michael Burgess of Texas is on the committee trying to find out if laws were broken. Were they, Congressman? It appears that they were, David. And uh, maybe one of the more distressing things that I learned this morning was that there doesn't appear to be any penalty for, for that infraction. And that's one of the aspects of this case that has taken so many twists and turns over the past couple of weeks. Well, I'm, the, I'm the so key question, that forgive me, Congressman, but the key question sure. that I've been interested in getting into, and I haven't found an answer to, hopefully you will, is who authorized that, that change of strategy that was unprecedented, that we heard had never been done, where private investors were given priority over taxpayers? Who authorized that? Well, that's the compelling question, isn't it, David? And a great part of our hearing this morning was sort of devolved into some procedural discussions about a, a memo that was written by the Department of Energy and a draft memo that was written by the Office of Management of the Budget. Uh, the Department of Energy's memo appeared to have been sanitized uh, after viewing the, the draft memo that was prepared by Office of Management of the Budget. Uh -oh. So the first memo looked as if it was directed <clears throat> excuse me, towards Secretary Chu. The second memo that had all reference to the Secretary removed, all reference to the General Counsel now, hold, removed. Let me just make uh, sure I understand you correctly. Removed or redacted? I mean, you know, sometimes when you ask for stuff, you see black lines are redacted. But you're, it sounds like you're saying more than that was done with Well, and that's what we don't know. And that's what's been so confounding about all of this is the reluctance of the administration to, to help us get the answers that are needed. And at this point, you know, you know, you hear it all the time. It's not the crime, it's the cover up. We're watching that literally unfold beneath our feet. It's like watching a, a slow motion train wreck. It is. And you, you almost want to reach out to the administration and say, please help us help you because it is going to get worse if you don't. And the, the, again, this morning, and the, and the Republicans and the Democrats were at each other over this, and it's unfortunate. But at the same time, this is critical information. Okay, but, but uh, you started. Old, what did you know, and when did you know exactly. it? Exactly. Start, but it wasn't just true. I mean, you started by saying that some that the law was broken. The law, if the law was broken, it was broken by somebody. The question is, who was it that broke the law, and what consequences would that person who broke the law? should they suffer well that's that's what was so tortured about the, the memo in question was that yeah the secretary has broad authority to change things if they see fit but uh, no one at the department of treasury really seemed to be buying that argument at the same time treasury did inform uh, uh, the, the department of energy that they ought to get clarification from the department of justice department of energy appeared to thank them for their interest and then ignore them and Again, it's frustrating. You've got public servants on both sides. Guys, did it never occur to you that someone ought to do the right thing here at some point? And, and apparently the answer was no. Well, the question is why also. First of all, who and then why? The, the, the why uh, brings us to the question of who was involved besides Chu. I, see what I see? I see sort of a setup where Chu is going to be the fall guy when a lot of these memos, in fact, point much higher than Mr. Chu, uh, point to, to memos saying that the White House wants this done, the office of the vice president wants this done. Isn't it conceivable that somebody in the West Wing was trying to go to the Department of Energy to get it done? Well, look, this is what I keep trying to explain, that all the time we're not given access to the documents we need and the people we need. I have a very vivid imagination, and my imagination runs wild with me, and it goes exactly in the direction that you're describing. Well, how do we, final question, I mean, how do we finally get the answer as to who authorized this and who was involved, and who knew that even though Solyndra was a lousy company, it was still going to get a loan? Well, and, and two, part of that may have been tied into they always expected to get the, uh, the, the carbon credits from the, from the climate change legislation that uh, was never forthcoming. There will be interviews be at the staff level between the, the, the people who wrote the memos and prepared the emails uh, that were the subject of discussion this morning. There is going to have to be a follow-up with Department of Energy. It's likely to occur week after next. There's a lot of work to be done, but the story's not over. And, and it's and not going very away. Quickly, very quickly, finally, these interviews will be done with federal authorities. That is, if somebody lies to them, they will be, uh, uh, they'll be essentially perjuring themselves. Well, the, the, the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee does take testimony under oath, so that's okay. correct. Very good. Representative Michael Burgess, good to see you again, Congressman. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, David. Appreciate it.